So you're in contract, you're ready to go meet your HUD consultant. And I'm here today with Gerald Stewart, who's a HUD consultant. He's gonna walk through the property, explain the process of what he's looking for when you meet with a HUD consultant. Remember that appointment can take up to one to two hours. So Gerald, walk us through today what we're gonna be doing here. Christine, what we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate the property on what needs to be done to meet minimum property standards for the FHA 203K, as well as we'll discuss options if the buyer desired to go with a conventional loan. So how do you start your process then? You know, the buyer, I assume I'm the buyer today because that's what we're doing. I would be like, hey, you just walk me through. Yep, our, our first right. step would be to uh, walk the exterior. I'm gonna uh, point out the things that need to be done from peeling paint, cracked sidewalks, siding, roofing, masonry, foundation walls. Uh, we'll look at the electrical service on the exterior and then we'll go to the interior. We're gonna tape Gerald while he does this so he can point out things and you'll see how your inspection will go. So for starters, the front entry walkway has trip hazards. Mm -hmm. So you have an option here of either repairing areas that are in disrepair or my recommendation would be to remove the entire sidewalk from here to your front steps and replace it with new concrete. Well, I'm pretty much on a budget, so I'd like to do it as uh, minimum as possible, but it, you know, for my purposes, I'd love to just repair it. Okay, so we're gonna repair trip hazards at front service walk of home. On the exterior foundation, we have some openings and gaps throughout. It's a flagstone foundation, so we want to grind out and spot tuck point exterior foundation is needed. On the front elevation of the home, which is the north elevation, we have a outlet that needs to be placed with a GFCI with a waterproof cover. At the first floor of the home, we have three living room windows with one lead glass transom. We're gonna replace those windows with new vinyl windows. And at the third floor of the home, we have one arch window and two double hung windows that will also be replaced. We have peeling paint at the front entry of the home. There's a front door with side lights and a transom. We'll scrape prime and paint those, and we will paint the iron rails at the front of the home. I'm gonna move over to the east elevation now. All right, on the east elevation, we currently have two glass block windows. They're gonna remain at the first floor. We have one, two, three, four, four double hung windows that will get removed and replaced with new vinyl insulated window units. And at the second floor, we have one, two, three, five window units that will get removed and replaced with new vinyl insulated windows and add one more to the first floor. At the attic, there's also one window that will get removed and replaced. All right, Jetta, we're at the west elevation now. We have two gas meters as far as windows. First floor has all been replaced. Second floor, we have one. We have one window at the second floor west elevation. Minimum tug pointing at the west elevation. The rear of the home is the south elevation. We have a three game meter socket that's intact. It's grounded. We have a 100 amp electrical service. Windows, first floor, we have peeling paint around one window. It could be recapped with aluminum. And then we have one wooden sash that needs to be replaced with a vinyl at the rear staircase. And then the third floor attic window needs to be replaced. As far as the roof goes, my recommendation would be that you would replace the roof. I haven't been to the second floor to identify any stains, water stains or leaking that maybe is causing damage to the interior. Uh, but based off the age of the roof, I would say that you tear it off and replace it. Once we see the attic, I'll be able to tell if it needs decking, if it's exposed. As far as your exterior goes, just a recap of what we've walked around. We're gonna have um, service walks that will be repaired to eliminate trip hazards. We'll have replacement of windows at various locations and elevations. We'll have spot tuck pointing of the exterior foundation walls and some minimum painting at the front entrance of the home. All right, so now we're in the basement. I typically like to start with the basement. This will give me a sense of the bones of the property. Most people think that the beauty of the home is the kitchen, but the foundation is where we start with. So I'm gonna walk the basement now, make a detailed observation a list of code violations or upgrades that are needed to make this home safe. So as we walk through this uh, basement, starting off, they currently have boilers that they're using for heat, for radiant heat. They've removed a lot of the insulation off the pipes down here, but there is still evidence of a special that needs to either be removed or encapsulated. As I walk through, you'll see me taking photographs. These are from my notes. So when I get back in the office, I have um, 
clear pictures of everything that I need to include in our work right up here today. Okay, so Jetta, we have some asbestos that needs to be encapsulated. We'll have electrical. Uh, there's BX green fill that needs to be removed and replaced with a hard pipe and pull a new wire. We have effervescence on the foundation walls of the basement here. We need to remove and clean all effervescence and then go through and parge the basement walls. Go look for the water service. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the foundation walls. In this case here, they're flagstone foundation. That's why they need to be parged because the moisture, the, the mortar between the actual stones has started to um, wash out from years of erosion. And the only fix for this is either to parge the walls or add a drain tile system if the basement is taken on water. We know all the walls need to be cleaned down and parged at a minimum. I wouldn't recommend a drain tile system unless this basement was going to be finished and due to the height of the ceiling we have here I don't think it'll ever be, ever be finished and use this livable space. The cracks that you see in the floor and the moisture it's because we have a thin layer of concrete. It's typically about an inch and a half or two inch mud slab that's poured and right now these wet spots that's uh, static pressure pushing the moisture up as water rises. Okay, here's the water service coming into the property. We have one galvanized pipe that's three quarter inch and we have a lead line one inch exterior diameter, which means this three quarter interior. We have two water heaters. One water heater needs to be replaced with a standard 40 gallon water heater, not high efficient. I'm looking at the age of this water heater. This water heater is probably built, manufactured in the late 70s, early 80s. The one next to it has been replaced recently. One next to it is a 2020, so four years old. You know, typical uh, life expectancy of a water heater, some are six years, some have nine year warranties, some have 12, so it just depends on the life expectancy of them and the condition of them. Some homes that are out in rural areas that have well water, they typically have to be replaced more frequently than the ones that have public water because it's just better water. All right, so now I'm looking at the floor joists underneath probably a bathroom and we have a lot of notching for plumbing pipes that took place and we have two floor joists that need to be sistered under the first floor bathroom. Okay, Jet, there is a outlet and there's a little toilet area in the basement. My recommendation is just to remove and cap the toilet. Coming down the uh, entrance to the basement, we need to install a handrail. There's no handrail at those stairs that lead to the basement and the outlets at the laundry area need to be changed. One of them needs to be changed to a GFCI. We have three electrical panels. We have one for each unit and one for the public. Only 12 breakers per panel. Based on what I'm seeing downstairs, um, they're going to need to be replaced with larger panels because we're likely going to have to upgrade the electrical throughout the building. Why can't we use those? I'm just, I'm sorry, because yep. he paid yeah. for this. He's going to be like, what do you mean? They're yep. not Because secure. they don't have enough space. So when we rewire the you upstairs. You can't add more on the right? There's no. No, no. I'm saying that those spaces are four breakers. But when the rewire takes place, a kitchen by itself typically has five to seven circuits. Mm -hmm. So there's six coming down one side. Your boiler is going to have a circuit mm -hmm. on the next side. Then you're going to have your hardwire smoke and CO2s. Your bathrooms will have a circuit. Your lighting will have a circuit. And then by the time you max out this panel based off of the square footage of the unit, you don't have any blanks and you can't exceed 70% usage of the panel. That's when why they these installed panels it, did small. they do the wrong size? I would say yes. At the time they installed these panels, they saw all the BX in the green field. So at that point, the contractor should have said, you know, we should put in, you know, a 20 breaker panel or a 24 breaker panel. So whenever you do your remodel, the panel's large enough for all the new circuitry that's going to be required at that time. But instead, they put in the smallest possible 100 amp panel that's on the market just to take up the spaces that were needed for the electric that was being asked to be produced at that time throughout the home. And the difference in the cost of this panel and a larger panel is less than $100. But the labor it takes to replace a panel is the same whether it's this panel or a larger panel. So we're at the first floor here, Gerald, and I'm going to, as a buyer, I want to kind of keep things. I'm not going high end. This is a two unit. I'm going to be renting a unit. I'm thinking vinyl plank floors and in the bathroom a surround. You know, I don't want to do custom tile or anything. So okay. if you could just walk through, 
obviously the first floor is not habitable and let me know what you think. So starting off the front entry door, we're gonna keep this door, but we'll have to replace the deadbolt because it has a key entry. So per code, we have to have a thumb turn. So front entry door, first floor unit Jetta, place deadbolt with new thumb turn. I'm gonna shoot you measurements as I walk through here. I'm in the front entryway of the first floor unit. Four, four feet, 10 inches by nine feet, six inches, 46 square feet by five feet, two inches, 19 square feet. Okay, Jet, going into the living room. 15 feet, five inches by 14 feet, 217 square feet. The floor to ceiling height by record is 11 feet. The dining room, 15 feet, six inches by 18 feet, 281 square feet. First floor bedroom number one, 16 feet by nine feet, six inches, 154 square feet. The kitchen, 12 feet, eight inches by 12 feet, five inches, 159 square feet. Bedroom number two, 13 feet, one inch by nine feet, 11 inches, 131 square feet. I'm gonna give you the bathroom. All right, the bathroom will be in two dimensions. First one is gonna be five feet, six inches by seven foot two, 40 square feet. And then three foot, nine inches by four foot six, 17 square feet. All right, so gut the first floor bathroom install new three-piece bath fixture set which will include a bathtub with tub shower faucet vanity with top bowl and faucet and toilet with seat we're going to do a tub surround for the tub shower walls we're going to rewire the entire building to meet local building codes there are two prong outlets throughout and not enough outlets throughout the entire unit we'll include a bath exhaust fan for first floor bathroom and we'll talk about second floor when we get up there we're going to remove the existing kitchen cabinets go back with new base and wall cabinets i would suggest you do at least a granite or granite. granite okay yep so we'll do a hard surface granite countertop we'll do new kitchen sink and faucet and we will add backsplash at one wall the plumbing wall in the kitchen where cabinets will go it's nine feet seven inches we're working with would you like to add a few cabinets on this side where the stove is going to go yeah okay our other wall for cabinetry where the stove will go is six foot nine inches and then are we going to do a self-venting microwave or a range hood what do you suggest for cost efficiency um just a self-venting okay. uh, range hood okay jenna we're going to need to install underlayment at the first floor living room and dining room because only the deck boards are here before the installation of vinyl plank flooring. When we demo the kitchen, we're gonna demo the framed drop ceiling that was installed, as well as the soffit over the cabinets. And there's currently ceramic tile at the kitchen floor that we'll need to get removed. As far as lighting goes, would you like to just have standard light fixtures in each room? Yep, and then in the kitchen, four can lights. Four cans, okay. We're gonna add four cans, recessed cans in the kitchen drywall repairs. There's gonna be a lot of drywall repairs throughout this unit. My recommendation would be the kitchen be totally new drywall because they're gonna cut so many openings in for new circuits. The bathrooms already get new drywall. The bedrooms, these walls have a paper over top of them. There's plaster behind these walls. My recommendation would be to re-drywall these bedrooms. They've already put new drywall in the living room and dining room. So let's drywall both bedrooms and closets. We will have some miscellaneous baseboard work at this first floor unit as well. And then prime and paint entire first floor. All right, so now we're up at the second floor of this home, of this building. We need to install a handrail at the staircase leading up to the second floor. Standing in the hallway before I enter the actual unit and the bathroom is not part of the unit. 
So this bathroom will have to be gutted and reconfigured and we'll have to gain access to this from within inside the unit. Second floor is in much better shape than the first floor. However, it still will need the same upgrades as far as electrical work. An additional bedroom on this unit is over the staircase. The first bedroom will be eight feet, nine inches, 10 feet, 10 inches, 96 square feet. Our living room is the same as the first floor as well as the dining room. We're gonna leave this carpet yep. intact in this unit. Once again, we're only doing the minimum property standards required for FHA 203K. Kitchen will remain intact. Only the electrical upgrades will take place in here. Bedroom number three, when the electrical rewire takes place, it'll have a new light fixture for the closet as well as for the bedroom, as well as bedroom number two. We have a pantry in this kitchen here. So this pantry will be converted into a bathroom with the existing bathroom to mimic what the first floor bathroom currently is. The rear entry door at the kitchen does not have a lock set. We need to add a deadbolt to this door. We have a small section of peeling paint at the second floor ceiling of the rear enclosed porch, scraped, primed, and painted as well as the one guardrail at the second floor. Repairs to drywall and plaster walls when the electrical work is done and then prime only the repairs on this floor. Now we're up at the attic. Basically up here, there's no insulation. Home requires a R value. So my recommendation is that they would insulate either floor coming up with cellulose or they would have to fur down the bottom side of these two by fours. Install spray foam insulation to meet the city requirements for the R value. Looking now at the bottom side of the roof, bottom side, you see the old shakes. This home had a cedar shake roof on it originally. And then they added a asphalt shingle afterwards. So when this roof is torn off, it will require new sheeting and then new shingles and all necessary flashing. There may be a few of the two by four that are being used as raptors that will require sistering. Currently, all of these two by fours are two foot on center. And then coming up to the attic, we need to install a handrail, replace the window at the staircase with tempered glass. And we have a vent pipe taped up currently. It has corroded all the way through, so it's letting the gases seep into the attic, the sewer gases. So we'll have to do some plumbing repair to one vent pipe at the attic before it goes out to the roof. So Gerald, as a buyer, I'm cost conscious and we just went through a two or 3K write up. There was a lot of things you pointed out. I also qualify for the home style loan, which is conventional. Mm -hmm. Would that reduce my cost so I can just get into the home because I'm gonna be renting it out? Absolutely, I mean, now, now that we've seen the whole property, we could scale back on a lot of maybe desired items um, and only do what's necessary to make it a comfortable home for yourself and a tenant to reside in. It could save you maybe 80 to $100,000. So that's the difference when a lot of people ask me what should I do an FHA 203K or a home style? The FHA 203K has more HUD minimum standards, so there will be higher cost for that, whereas the conventional does not have these HUD minimum standards. So the write-up cost will be a lot less, where maybe we can do the home style for 100,000, the FHA might've been 180,000. So that's why when the consultant comes out, he will do the write-up, and if we can qualify for a different program, we will look at that if the 203K write-up is too much. If you only qualify for 203K and the write-up comes in higher than expected, we can ask the seller to renegotiate the price and try to see if we can get the budget to work within the write-up from the consultant. So that's a little bit of information on HUD 203K consultant write-up. Remember, I'm here for all your mortgage needs. While I do renovation lending, I also do move-in ready. So if you're unsure whether you want to get a fixer upper or a move in ready, I can handle both. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more news, market updates, and opportunities to save money.